welcome to the last in the series of Studio One, which is a bit sad. But it's not all that sad tonight because what an exciting guest we've got tonight. It's Jim Kerr of Simple Minds, you've obviously seen from the Waterfront video. Jim, thanks a million for coming all the way to Carlisle. That's OK. My favourite place. <laughs> the favourite place, obviously, next to the Govan Ferry, which you just saw on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. Explain why you, you made a video there rather than doing a Duran Duran and going on yachts somewhere exotic. Well... You know, Govan can be exotic, especially when you've you've toured the the world and you come back and there's a character there that um, I don't know draws your your attention. I think when you travel non-stop, you can get very very blasé. You know, no matter how much you try not to be. And in fact, the song was inspired by um, I think this time, probably this time two years ago, a walk along the waterfront in Glasgow, and just looking at the buildings and, and the view and the boats and the fact it's become a sort of ghost town there whereas one at one time obviously it was a thriving industry and so it is a very picturesque place nonetheless and it's still very alive in some senses and it just seemed the perfect idea to you know do it there as opposed to kind of fake it. Uh, does Glasgow mean a lot to you because obviously you and the band mean a lot to Glasgow mm -hmm. so I mean is it reciprocated? Yeah, it's paradise. <laughs> no, um, subconsciously, I, I think it does, but not, not consciously. In fact, when we were 16, Charlie Birchall and myself couldn't wait to get out of it. We went and we hitchhiked all round, round Europe. But I think, I think you have to go away and then, and then come back to like fully uh, appreciate a place. And we, we certainly do when we get the chance to come back to Glasgow, which is a lot more. Um, now because we everyone no one wants to move away we want to stay there and there is it's something very much Glaswegian about our, our music although we weren't I mean we, <coughs> we go to the States and people talk about your music you know it's, you're from Scotland shouldn't it be Celtic <laughs> it's right. Heather, bagpipes. You know, yeah Heather and Kilts and all that well as you know in Glasgow you don't see much of that it's just an urban sprawl like like anything else but I think the thing that makes our music very Glaswegian is I don't know some of the the style in it some of the honesty and uh, I don't know some of the sort of passion I think we are very glass glass region without being uh, you know really really conscious here that's I that I mean that the city itself does have quite a history of passion and that's probably where the you know the history of violence arises mm -hmm. from as well but uh, your view uh, in your music came anyway, always gets a very optimistic one which I would think was a strange thing to come out of a place like that no I just think that's not 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 a lot of things have come from Glasgow. Uh, the things that have, unfortunately, have been on that, that basis. I mean, the tide's kind of turning with people like um, the book, book Lanark mm -hmm. and... Uh, Alistair the Grace. Yeah, it's Nothing, brilliant. Yeah. And there's a view there that is not, you know, the hard man, the sort of drinking and things like that. I, I do believe there is a new, a new sky above, above the city. I think there's something about the air there something about that that coast and something about the spirit of the people um that that goes it does it just makes a sort of, a sort of vision i think this sort of cliche is it's time for them to go really right well we'll talk a wee bit more in a minute but let's see the video that uh if this outrageously successful single in the states and it's uh, it's going to do really well here as well this is don't you forget about me oh that's really unusual for simple minds to be doing that in june isn't it writing well singing somebody else's song for start and doing music for a film score. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Who asked you? Um, a guy called Keith, Keith Forsey, who, um, well, in the beginning, actually, the bands always wanted to do themes for, you know, movies and things, but not, not living in, in Hollywood, it's awful hard to get a foot in the door and, and such. And I think the music <clears throat> not so much the band comes up with, but the music over the years that Charlie Burchill and Mick, Mick McNeil can come up with is, is ideal for movies. That's right, things like Theme for Great That's Cities, it. I remember that one's a really big soaring one. Yeah, and every single al album we've done, we've always had an instrumental track that sort of showed that, that side of, of the band. And we would get a lot of people writing to us, usually sort of amateur filmmakers saying, can I use this for my exhibition, can I use this for my own little movie? And that gave us a sort of... Sort of like, like the confidence that we're doing the right thing. But trying to get the, the sort of big boys in is awful hard. And as it happened, this guy, Keith Fossey, he's, he's having a lot of, he's getting a lot of respect just now in America for writing themes for movies and things. 
he came to see the uh, the band live and he's a huge fan and he asked us to do it and at first we thought nah it has to be your song and such and he said well i've got a, a song here and he played it and it sounded sort of like simple minds by numbers anyway it's it sound, is very simple minded yeah, isn't it it sounded like he'd taken all the all the elements of the band put it in a, a computer <laughs> and came up with this this track so it was it was just a combination of that and also the fact that he's so enthusiastic and i, I just love enthusiasm he's, he's such a fan i mean i'm a real real fan myself and I was looking at his album collection there was everything we'd ever done in it and we just, just couldn't say no but at that time we had no no idea it was going to come out as as a, um, a single we just thought it was part of this album mm -hmm. this uh, movie um, soundtrack but it has come out and it's done well and the great thing is that um, <clears throat> it's kicked to open the doors for us and I think both Charlie and Mick will be able to do a lot more music for films. Plus the fact in America it being such an enormous success is rocketing into the charts like that. Mm. Perhaps people are going to start listening to original Simple Minds stuff uh, now. Is that yeah. what you're hoping? Yeah, it is because the band up until now had been very big in the sort of cultural centres of America, New York and Los Angeles and San Francisco. But um, <clears throat> all the Midwest, the sort of redneck land, mm. we, we we didn't really have a sort of look in. But this is this really has opened opened people up, up to the band. Right, well talking about opening up to the bands, just to, for this moment we're going to see a track recorded for us by a Carlisle band, or Cumbrian band I should say, and this is Big Amongst Cheap playing Daffodils. Oh yeah, we're back again, that was almost the Simple Minds up on the catwalk from Spark on the Rain album, and Jim Kerr I'm glad to say is still with us. Now Jim, we saw Big Amongst Sheep earlier and we've been dealing with a whole lot of really small bands or not so well known bands mm -hmm. in this programme. I mean, do you get much of a chance to see what's going on in that level of the music business? Really? To be honest, no Muriel, I, I sort of, I depend on TV programmes like this and other stuff and, and <clears throat> not not anymore, we're just so, so busy that the last thing you just just want to do is go out and, and cram into a little bar and see a band no matter how good they are but I you know tapes and, and I I really also depend on friends if you get if you get a mate who says oh you know you missed yourself last week was this band who are, are brilliant and that is more that makes more impression on me than like you know a double page ad in NME or something mm. sort of word of mouth thing I think the only only sort of new bands that I I really I mean kind of blown away with has been been blown out Mm, oh uh, yes, now uh, we had them on the, the show earlier on in the series. Now that's, they're an interesting band because they haven't actually played live uh -huh. yet. Do you find that you get your stimulus musically then just from things like a, a record? You don't actually have to see the band live. I mean, where do you get your, your musical ideas? Uh, it's not just, just kind of kind of musical ideas. I get ideas from everything from movies to books and, and records and seeing them. And seen a band live. I think it's a something, something mixture of the whole, of the whole thing. I still do believe in in great live bands. I think if you read, especially the music press of, of late, the idea of rock shows and stadiums and all that is out. I don't think that's true. I think you go to a huge hall and see a brilliant band with brilliant lights and the audience together. There's nothing to touch that. There's also nothing to touch a wee band and a wee club doing it. But I think I think live bands that can do it live, I'll, I'll always hold high in esteem. But you get a nice a nice record is is great too. I I just like people. I still think people like David Bowie, although he's not very hip anymore. He makes fantastic pop music. Peter Gabriel, um, I said Blue Nile. You two obviously make great great rock music. Um, what other new bands? Red Red Guitars I think are really good. They're from Hull. Right yeah. and. Obviously, Mackenzie's a genius yes. and stuff like that. Oh, all the geniuses. We've had them on this show. I mean, this <laughs> right. is where you can see geniuses. The genius well. parade. <laughs> what, what excites you, stimulates you, or, or just really gets you going apart from music? I mean, what's the biggest thing in your life just now? Oh. <laughs> That's a tough one, eh? The biggest thing in life just now just is life. I just think, you know, people talk about eras like the 20s was a was an interesting era the 30s the 40s and and you do look back and you think god i wonder what that was like but just now as you know you look at this the kind of world and there's always something every day in the news and newspapers it just makes you think how did that happen how is this this going on or uh, it's so sad or it's so great i just think <clears throat> the very fact that that the world is turning is the most important thing in my life 
Doesn't he sound? <laughs> are, you, are you really excited about being a dad now? Because you know, that's a huge change in your life as well. I am. I think there, you know, the only, only comments I've got in that would be really the obvious cliches over the moon and everything. But <laughs> I don't know. I mean, how would you like me to be your dad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, I think people could do one. Do you think it'd be all right? <laughs> I think so. Well, I shall give you the adoption papers after the show then, Jim, because from henceforth I'd like to be known as uh, Jim Kerr's daughter. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Now, we're going to finish off this series of Studio One. Let's hope there will be another series because of popular demand. No. 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 I don't care. Just... Jesus. Well, thank you.